Hello, my dear student. Welcome to another edition of your mathematics lesson today in continuation with your main topic, that is matrices. What you're going to learn today is the types of metrics. So let's begin. After completing the very lesson today, my dear student, you'll be able to list and explain the different types of metrics. This is what I hope you'll be able to do after completing the very lesson today. So as usual in your favorite segment of the lesson marks is fun today, my dear student, I'll give you another group of numbers, another special group of numbers, and this group of numbers are called powerful numbers. This is really interesting. We are going to see what numbers are called powerful numbers after completing the lesson today, so don't go away. To begin the lesson, my dear student, let me just consider the very first type. This type is called a square matrix. Square matrix is a matrix that has a number of rows equals to the number of columns. So if the number of rows in that very matrix is the same thing as the number of columns of that very matrix, then the matrix is called a square matrix. Let's just have a typical example of a square matrix. One of them is the matrix L. Look at this matrix X. You can see that it are, there are two rows there, one, two. And there are also two columns, one, two. So this matrix is a square matrix because the number of rows is two and the number of columns is also two. So this matrix is now called two by two. That is, it has two rows and the two columns. So it is two by two square matrix. Let me give you another square matrix, a matrix M. Look at this matrix. If I ask you to count how many rows you see there, you now tell me it is one, two, three rows. And if I ask you how many columns do you have there, you tell me one, two, three columns. So the number of rows is three. The number of columns there is also three. So this will now be a three by three square matrix. It having two same number of rows and the columns. So this is what we call the square matrix. And next type of matrix is called the identity matrix. Identity matrix is a matrix in which is a square matrix. And at the same time, it has entries all ones in the diagonal and other remaining elements zero. So identity matrix is just a matrix uh, that is square, that is number one criteria of identity matrix. And the second criteria, it has uh, diagonal entries, all ones, and other entries, that is remaining entries, all zeros. Let's just have a typical example of this identity matrix. Identity matrix, you can be this matrix A, which you can see is a square matrix. It has two rows and two columns. So it is two by two matrix. But you can see this diagonal entry, one here, another one here. So the entries in the diagonal is one, one, and other entries will now be zero. So this is an identity matrix. Another example of identity matrix is matrix K. Look, look at it. This is a square matrix. It's having three rows and three columns there. So it is a square matrix, and you can see the diagonal elements there, one, one, one here, one here, one here. This is diagonal. And the remaining entries will now be zero. And you have to take a note. You just have one diagonal containing so the ones, not the two diagonal. If you have another one, one here is not identity matrix. It's just one diagonal that contains one, one each as the elements and the remaining entries will now be zero. So this is what we call the identity matrix. So the third case we are going to consider is equal matrix. And this says two matrices of the same dimension are equal if and only if all their corresponding entries are equal. So you have two matrix and if those two matrix are equal, if you now check First, they will have same dimension. And if you look at the entries, the corresponding entries, they must be equal, all of them. Let's just have a typical example of two matrix that are equal. If you have matrix X with this elements 2, 3, 4 in the first row, 0, minus 1, 
one in the second row. And another matrix Y, look at it. You have entries in the first row, two, three, four, and the zero minus one, one in the second row. If these two metrics are equal, then what you do first is to check, do they have same dimension? If yes, look at the dimension of matrix X. It is a two rows, three columns, so it is two by three. And look at the, the, the matrix Y. It has a two rows and a three columns, so it is also two by three. So dimension is the same. That is, both of them are two by three, two by three. Then what you now do to check uh, if uh, the first entry here, do here, that is element in the first row, first column, you have two. Is it the same here? Yes. Next is this entry. First row, second column is three. First row, second column is also three. Then the entries is the same. And you move up to this last one here. You have one in the second row, third column, one in the second row, third column. So all the corresponding entries are equal. Then this two matrix X and Y, you can now say that the two matrix are equal. But if one of those entries, assuming you have one here, but in this entry is not one, but another different number, then those two matrix will not be equal. They are only equal if they have same dimension and their corresponding entries are also the same. Let's just consider a matrix, two matrix that are not equal. If you have matrix A, of course it's two by two. Matrix B is another two by two matrix, so of course they have same dimension, but probably some of the entries are not the same. That is, the corresponding entries may not be the same. You have uh, here two as your element in the first row, first column in matrix A. But uh, in matrix B, element in the first row, first column, it is one. Only this will now disqualify these two matrix to be not equal. Of course, if you look at it critically, the entries is one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. But the positions, uh, the elements, uh, the not uh, meaning are not equal in the corresponding position. So I will, if I have two, I'm expected to have two here. If this is three, I would expect to have a three here. If this is one, I wanted to have one here exactly. If it is four, I wanted to have four here. This is what you mean by equality of matrix. So this A and the B are not equal. With this, my dear student, I have come to the end of this lesson. I hope you find it resourceful. And let me just move to the last segment, Mercy is fun, and explain what are powerful numbers. So let me explain, my dear student, what are powerful numbers. A positive number L is powerful if what happens if for every prime factor of this number N, if that prime factor is P, for example. P square is also a factor of the same number N. So that number N will now be very powerful, which means uh, the factors, all the prime factors of that number, also the squares of those prime factors is indeed going to be a factor of that same number N. Let's just have examples of uh, powerful. The number 72 is very powerful. Why? Because the prime factors of 72 is just 2 and 3. This is the prime factorization of 72. 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 gives you 72. So the prime numbers that there is only 2 and 3. So this is powerful because uh, also, also 2 square and 3 square, meaning 4 and 9. This 4 is 2 square, that is the square of one of the prime factor 2, and the square of this number 3 gives you 9. This 4 and the 9 will also going to be factors of the same number 72. Let's just find out, divide 72 by 4, divided 72 by 4 gives a result 18, no remainder, which means 4 is a factor. Similarly, 72 can be divided by 9 to get 8. So which means 9 is another factor of 72. So you can see 72 has prime factors 2 and 3. And when you square 2, when you square 3, the two results you have are also going to be factors of 72. So which means uh, based on this definition of powerful the number 72 is powerful. So other examples of powerful include 3600, 
108 and so on. These are just a few examples of powerful numbers apart from the 72.